Hey guys, last year 2018 I was in a meeting in the EU Commission in Brussels organized by SIPA, our European Association for Pest Management and I am showing you today a speech of Håkan Kjellberg, the technical manager of anti cmax an international renowned company. I found the speech of Håkan really inspiring and it's, it, it got a lot of content that inspired us in our sector to look at pest control and its future differently. I hope it inspires you as well and it's an interesting speech. I filmed it with my iPhone and the European Commission and I hope you guys like it. If so, do comment, like it and share it with your friends and yeah, have a great one. Enjoy the speech. Bye. So uh, on behalf of the CEPA and Scientific Committee and as spokesman, I would like to thank you and thank you the organizing committee for letting me be here, fly all the way from Sweden, the cold, not so cold this time, Sweden, and we had like 20 degrees Celsius yesterday, so it's good. The one thing that comes into my mind is, I won't bore you with figures and, and statistics, even though I belong to a scientific committee, it's more of like, have you emotional engaged? Because when I was a young kid, I'm, I started out looking at David Attenborough, he was flying around the world, uh, walking around the different islands and, and we talked about things that happened far, far away. Like you can kind of catch some diseases you never heard of. We talked about malaria, uh, we talked about leishmaniasis, so uh, we talked about chikungunya, dengue. Those were the diseases that you, when I was protected from living in, in cold Sweden. But if you look today, it's different. Isn't it? I mean, what Susanna, uh, Katrina just told us, it happens here and now. We started out in, in southern part of Italy. It migrates up. And what's next? Is it Oslo? Or is it London? Or is it somewhere else? When I'm a biologist, then you actually found some indoor living species of mosquitoes in, in Gothenburg, which is probably a positive or uh, possible carrier of diseases. So this is happening here and now. So it's no longer something you watch on telly that you can actually, you can, you can be a part of it if you don't want to. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's actually here. And if you look at the main trends, we can, if we start with insects, we have the mosquitoes. It's, we, we see different species carrying different diseases uh, and it's caused a lot of troubles. Uh, and mosquito control is something that we also think it, it's not happening here and now. It's something from like in the wetlands of Asia or, but it's now, it's very close to the subways. It's in, in, in some, some flooding pools you have around you in sewer systems. So mosquito control has been more and more important in even where we, in the northern part of Europe. And we can see different insects affecting the tourism industry. I'm talking about bed bugs. Uh, we see a tremendous increase in bed bugs, even if they still are not proven to be spreading diseases. They cause enormous amount of money in cost just to make sure that you, as a uh, guest staying at a hotel, can be free of bed bugs. So, looking at, and uh, you mentioned cockroaches, and cockroaches we can also see are spreading and we see new species arriving uh, that you suddenly, they shouldn't be here. And that creates a new terms. You have to look into pest control from a different perspective. And that's what's good about SIPA and also the interconnections we have with all the uh, fantastic pest managers all around Europe. So you, you can be aware of it. Then of course we have rats. Rats is uh, at least in, in where I come from, they have increased like five or six times since 2006. Uh, we see a dramatic change in brown rat control. Uh, it's, it's everywhere. Because there is so much food available, they have a lot of places to live and hide. And uh, they use our sewer systems as highways and also as just sitting there like a sushi table, you know, when the food is passing <laughs> by, uh, so they can pick small pieces of food up. And there are not, there's no predators down there. And they can walk from one 
part of the town to the other without crossing any streets. So, and rats are also known to be carriers of a lot of diseases, as you all know. So we, we can see, and the closer they get to humans, in bigger portions, the higher risk tends to be. And then, of course, we have the flying rats, birds, that are also connected to mo mosquitoes. We, we can see different patterns in, uh, like geese and uh, some mallards and so on, that is flying around and spreading diseases, both to humans and both to, to livestock. Uh, so that, that's affecting health in a new way, uh, as they tend to be, at least where I come from again, I mean, we have a lot of like pools, nice areas to walk around in cities, and people are feeding the birds, and the birds are carrying diseases, so the more, the closer you get, the higher the risk is. And from a, like a trade perspective, it's not affecting Europe as much, but the brown marmorated stink bug is a new species, it's always not new, but it's causing enormous problems for Australia. Because when we are sending cars from from Europe, these small animals, insects, tend to hibernate in newly manufactured cars. And when going to Australia, they can cause an enormous disaster uh, by ruining their like, fruit orchards and so on. So we need to be aware of that we are interconnected with other parts of the world. So pest control is more than just uh, Europe. It's something that we need to be, like it's more of a world problem that we can engage to together. Uh, one thing that comes into my, my mind when, is, when, when it comes to trends is we're going from, from guessing to knowing and that we need to use the monitoring much more. We have the data, I have so many reports on vector-borne diseases, vector-borne diseases, vector-borne diseases. And so there's so much knowledge, and there's so much knowledge in this room and among the pest management industry, uh, together with SEPA, that we should do something about it. Because monitoring is the key. We need to know the baseline. Where do we stand today? Because if we don't measure the, the, the if there's an increase or decrease, we don't uh, actually know if we're doing better or, or worse. So we need to gather all the data somehow to, to have, have the knowledge of today because we need to measure the future. There is a lot of talk about trends when it comes to knowledge. Uh, as I said, there's so many reports uh, that is talking about myocytes, rodenticides, how it affects the environment, how it affects the, the, the life in general but also knowledge in how to do things, how to control th things. So the professional pest management needs to step up and work together with authorities all around the world, and especially in Europe, uh, because I can see from, uh, from a distance that there are some, some areas that are better in doing that than Europe. Uh, but I think we can, uh, together, <coughs> be probably more strong. And of course, we have the urban sprawl. Uh, we need more since we have a lot of immigration, uh, people would like to come or they're like fleeing from, from uh, much poorer situations. But we need to make, make room for, for more inhabitants. So the urban sprawl is also taking much more into consideration when it comes to uh, spaces for, for building apartments, building houses. So we go, go into areas that we used to see as like flooding areas and building buildings and that creates a new problem suddenly that your backyard is what used to be a swamp so you can have some mosquitoes that was there before you suddenly just in brackets sitting by you having coffee in the morning uh, we can see affecting tourism uh, tourists uh, with, uh, with like rats I think someone can actually uh, give a comment on that one. Uh, I've heard a uh, rumor like that uh, some rats in one country affected a whole town, that we see the numbers of tourism and the income from it decreased by 25%. Uh, because people think 
rats are dirty and disgusting. Of course, we have the diseases. Uh, as I mentioned before, and also Katarina mentioned, so I don't want to, to like over and to over make it, but, but this is something we need to be aware of. The pests that we are controlling uh, are causing uh, or spreading diseases of different kinds. And the more we get into interconnected, our world is kind of small these days. Uh, you can go from one continent to another within a couple of hours. We have uh, much more of trade, uh, bringing food in, bringing food back out. Uh, you are visiting, you are spreading, you, are, you can be a part of the spreading of diseases and also be part of spreading like insects and, and mammals and so on. So the, the interconnected thing is that there's a web, there's a worldwide web when it comes to pests. They travel, they use us as uh, a part of the travel. So to get into your suitcase, get into your package of food that you ordered on, online. Uh, so they travel with you. So let me finish by just saying it's, it's happening here and now. It's nothing that was from the past. So it's, uh, yeah. So thank you very much for this, like, a little bit of trend talk. And now, Katrina. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.